it's no big secret that as a result of a pretty large succession for a period of years of mediocre product and maybe an over influx of product, the comic book genre, which is still probably the most bankable thing to do, but it, it, it's suffering, whether it's DC, Marvel, whatever. We've got a very sparse 2024 coming out, which means 2025 could be very important. And that is the subject of today's Mint Mobile hotline question of the day. Listen, guys, if you've got a topic or question for the show and you'd like to hear your voice on our show, go ahead and call our Mint Mobile hotline anytime 24-7 at 951-268-4259. And this question is about the real big importance of 2025. Check it out. Hey, John and crew. Jeremy Lynch here. Big fan of the show. Uh, my question is about the significance of the year 2025 to the superhero movie genre. How significant do you think that year is going to be? Personally, I think it could be a make or break year for the genre. We have DC launching its new DCU with James Gunn and Peter Safran starting with Superman Legacy that year. With Marvel taking kind of a break in 2024. They only have Deadpool slated for that year. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks a lot, and I'm looking forward to hearing the show. All right, thanks a lot for calling that in, Jeremy. And you know what? I, I don't think you're far off. 2025 could very well be a make-or-break year for the comic book genre in the sense that it's going to be the resurgence return to where we were in 2018 or it's going to be the beginning of winter that winter has come and we're going to go through a couple of years of of you know the barren wilderness of cold and the ice and then another comic book movie will come out some time down the road that'll reignite it all again it all goes in cycles but I don't think you're actually exaggerating when saying 2025 could be that make or break year because 2024 is our let's catch our breath year, right? Obviously for DC, because DC has no product coming out in 2024, at least not in the DCU. I believe Joker 2 is supposed to come out in 2024. Mm -hmm. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, there's that. Marvel has the one film, they've got Deadpool 3, but really it's an eye of the storm kind of year for 2024. In 2025, Marvel comes back out swinging and DC is relaunching with Superman Legacy, with a brand new DCU. As a matter of fact, let's go and take a look at the schedule here. In 2025, DC has Superman Legacy, and although it's not a part of the DCU, they've got the Batman 2 coming out. Marvel's got four theatrical films coming out, <laughs> as of now, at any rate. They got Captain America Brave New World, they got Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, and Blade. And... I actually think you are right in saying that this lineup is the lineup that I think the entire industry is looking at and hoping that these things break out. Now, look, I've already said a million times, I don't accept, expect Superman Legacy to be a big hit at the box office. It's going to take time to rehabilitate. DC is a broken, bruised puppy walking that's been hit by five cars trying to get down the sidewalk right now. It's going to take a little while for it to heal up, right? But Superman Legacy needs to be great in order to get the healing started. It's super important that it's great, not so important that it's a massive box office hit because nothing with a DC label on it is a massive hit anymore. And then the Batman 2. Can it meet the same levels of success that the first one did? Hell yeah. Doesn't even... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Guarantee it. Doesn't even have to surpass it, but, but can it get close to that same level of success? And then you move down to the Marvel. Now, let's listen. You're coming out of the gate in 2025 with Captain America. A, a Captain America movie that right now seems like it's in a bit of a precarious position. They've just brought on a new writer. They're going back for some reshoots in a few months. Try to change a bunch of things. Of course, that's a you know result of the fact that Kevin Feige now has his authority back and he wants to change some things. That's fine. The highly anticipated Fantastic Four. Thunderbolts, mm -hmm. which I wasn't interested in until I saw the lineup. Now I am. And the movie that may never happen, Blade. <laughs> <laughs> that they literally announced four years ago. I... Listen, I know we as movie fans are prone to hyperbole. 
But I think you're right. I think this is a make or break year. Because if Superman Legacy can live up to its potential, and if the Batman 2 can get close to the same level of success as the first one, and at least three of the four, Captain America, Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, Blade, not all of them have to knock it out of the park, but if at least three out of the four of them are really good and solid and do pretty well, I think that would bode very well moving into the future. That, yes, we hit a stumble. The comic book genre started to flounder a little bit after 2019, 2020, but we're back on track and we're ready to go. However, if Superman Legacy is bad, oh God, for, for, okay, let's not even talk about the comic book genre as a whole. Let's just talk about DC. They're really in trouble. Because you, you know, the old adage, you don't get a second chance to make a good first impression. Okay, James. And everybody knows I'm a huge James Gunn guy. I'm a massive James Gunn fan. I don't mean to put undue pressure, but oh my God, you damn well better knock this one out of the park. Doesn't have to make $700 million, but it's got to be great so people start getting excited about the product again. Has to. But if Captain America Brave New World disappoints or underperforms, if Fantastic Four... A movie people have been dying to have happen ever since the Marvel Cinematic Universe started to get big dreams of Fantastic Four coming back to the MCU and all that kind of stuff. If Thunderbolts underperform, if Blade doesn't move the needle for anybody, that's it. That's it. Which was the Batman one with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger? That was Batman and Robin? Forever. forever. Is that Forever? Or, um, Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. All right. Awful. Batman and Robin yeah. killed the genre. For a couple of years. <laughs> it did. It killed the genre for a couple of years. Killed my genre. You can't <laughs> Jeez, put was... nipples on a suit. <laughs> I That was the least of its problems. <laughs> that was the least of its problems. But I, I would propose if, if 2025 underwhelms, we could be in the same position that we were in when Batman and Robin came out. That we're going to have like a couple of years where it's going to be pretty hard going. So I think it is vitally important that not every single one of these movies knock it out of the park, but that they overall turn in a solid, solid effort. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Better Help. You know, guys, it's Christmas time, and I don't know about your family, but mine always used to like giving a lot of gifts. And whether you like giving big, elaborate gifts or small, personal gifts, it's important not to forget to also give to yourself during this season. Because the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season, too. And you know, I think we need to talk about this more. You know, we always encourage each other when we're talking about improving our physical health, you know, going to the gym and working out. We talk about it with each other. We encourage each other. Well, I believe it's time we start doing that when it comes to our mental health. Make sure we're taking care of ourselves by looking at our mental health too. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So guys, in the season of giving, give yourself what you need with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash campia today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash campia. For it anyway, Chris, you know the question, but we, we haven't been in this kind of position in the last 15 years of, you know, from a perception point of view, that the comic book genre is as weak as it is right mm -hmm. now. I mean, that's had some great stuff, yes, but sure. more weak stuff than we're accustomed to. Is is it hyperbole to think that 2025 could be your make or break year? How do you see it? I don't think it's hyperbole, but I think if you look at it from a film history perspective, it's not a super dire situation because film is cyclical, right? The reason why Star Wars partially is named A New Hope is not only because of the title of the film, but it's a return to the hero genre when we were dealing with anti-heroes for so long. Mm. People got burnt out on that, and we had all these kind of gritty, grim anti-heroes in the 1970s, and that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people ran to in audiences. And then we saw people tire of that, and then we had the emergence of heroic figures again, good versus evil, with a bit more clear-cut boundaries, right? So I think with this, First of all, these movies have to come out, full stop. Um, yeah, one, something they haven't done so good at lately. Exactly. Just coming out. Of, yeah, are they going to come out in 2025? <laughs> are they going to come out in 2025? We'll find out. 
And if they do, sure, that could be a year where we could see the pendulum shift one way or the other. But I don't want people to get too distraught. I know it seems really upsetting when it's IP that you love, stories that you love, to see movies shift away from it. But that also is just the nature of film. We tend to gravitate to one kind of story. Executives tend to gravitate towards one kind of story for a while, too. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is bankable. Hey, we know we can profit off of this. And even if we do have to pause on this, this will allow other types of films to be made for a while. And those will be really cool and interesting, too. And then we'll come back to superheroes. We see it in the comic book industry itself with superheroes. It's why there was the rise of the antiheroes, of Garth Ennis kind of things, of things like the boys. So even if this does fail, it's going to be a baptism by fire where a phoenix can rise from it and we can have something greater in the end. All right, guys. I guess the question is... What do you think about this? Is 2020, is this an exaggeration? Like 2025 could indeed be a make or break year for the genre, at least for a short term. Whatever you guys think, let us know. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.